Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Monday, October 5th, 2020, and this is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Shaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Shaken Analytics. Head over to shakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show which also gives you daily stock ideas to consider and that hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So it's good to be back after a nice long weekend up in the Finger Lakes region of New York State, a beautiful area. Uh, let's kick it off though. U.S. equities finished mostly lower on Friday, but off the worst levels of the day. Small caps actually closed higher on the day. S&P 500 did snap a four-week losing streak. Treasuries were mostly weaker with the curve steepening. The dollar was lower versus the yen and sterling, but stronger on the Euro cross. Gold was down one half of 1%. WTI crude down 4.3% after falling more than 3.5% on Thursday. Sector performance definitely had a risk off feel with REITs and utilities leading while tech and comm services lag the broader tape. Uh, main focus of the day was obviously on President Trump testing positive for COVID-19 uh, and then subsequently being admitted uh, after the market closed to Walter Reed uh, Hospital. Obviously, that was the key story of the day, driving a lot of the headlines on Friday as well as over the weekend. Uh, and somewhat lost in that was the fact that non-farm payrolls for September missed expectations. Uh, so that's kind of how things played out. Uh, Friday seems like a long time ago. And as we get to the desk this morning, we're actually seeing a bit of a rebound in S&P futures, up 50 basis points. Uh, Asian equities were higher overnight, led by Australia, Japan, Hong Kong, and Korea. European markets are seeing solid gains as well. Treasuries are mostly weaker once again, with more curves steepening. The dollar is better against the yen, but lagging on the euro. Gold is off 20 basis points uh, after a 2% rally last week. Crude oil getting a bit of a rebound as well, up 3.5% after losing 8% roughly uh, last week. So that is the framework as we kick things off uh, uh, on a new week on Monday morning that starts with the uh, majors, the uh, SPY, Qs, and IWM above key near-term support levels, right? Uh, and, and those support levels, quite frankly, are somewhat adjusted, right? Remember, support and resistance is oftentimes a zone. We were highlighting 325 on SPY. We tagged 320 and then rebounded, okay? So let's call it 320 to 325 as a support zone in the near term. Uh, for the uh, S&P 500 or SPY. 270 solid level for the Qs, 145 to 150, uh, the key, uh, key level that we are eyeing for the IWM, the small caps. Now, I think that the potential for volatility uh, is likely to persist into and past the election, right? We had the debate last week, then the president tests positive. Re headline volatility uh, is going to be a factor. And to us, it's opportunity one way or the other, okay? Uh, we have the key levels. As always, we're going to focus on the trends and not the headlines, but being mindful of the fact that the headlines could present opportunity that creates, the, pre the headlines could create volatility that presents opportunities as long as support holds, right? If you're bullish, you're looking for these support levels to hold. So, you know, volatility induced by headlines that sends these averages down to those key levels those levels hold that presents an opportunity and IWM you are invited to the party uh, we want to see the IWM break above their August highs uh, and kind of get in gear with the rest of the market that would be bullish uh, at the very least from a breath perspective right doesn't have they don't have to be outperforming and I've said this before I'll continue to say it small caps don't have to outperform in this regard we just want to see them getting gear and getting in gear uh, would be kind of, you know, breaking out with the rest of the averages. So that's something that we are watching closely uh, here in the near term while noting, as you'll see on the next slide, that small caps actually closed higher on the day yesterday. So let's hit our market in a minute. What are we writing about today? Well, look for choppy trading with increased headline volatility. We, we kind of know why. Spy support in the 320 to 325 range remains key for equity bulls. That's it. After that, you start looking for your pockets of outperformance, right? Tech's been an outperformer, areas of discretionary in particular, the builders have been outperformers. So if you get a volatility induced pullback to the 320, 325 range, uh, you wanna look for opportunities in those outperforming areas of the market. Now, gold holds below the breakdown level. And I think that's important with the dollar as a key tell, which is thus far holding support in the near term. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on in the show. And as I said, futures point to a higher open 
here today. Now, with the major indices from a power bar perspective, the Dow lost 50 basis points on Friday, four to eight bulls to bears there, still skewed to the negative. S&P 500 down about 1%, but the power bar ratio is back in bullish territory, 114 to 78. NASDAQ, 24 to 10 bulls to bears there was the hardest hit on Friday, uh, down nearly 3%. And that's uh, somewhat interesting to me. Small caps bucked the trend, up 47 basis points. Uh, on the day. Uh, I think that uh, as Vice President Biden's numbers improve uh, and his lead in the polls widened, uh, potential for small cap outperformance. 638 to 314 bulls to bears. Bonds down ticked actually, which was somewhat surprising to me uh, given, given the headlines on uh, Friday, given a bit of a flight to safety in the equity market was a little surprising to see bonds fall and the curve steep. And I have to wonder if that's more a function of this stagflation theme that we've been talking about. Real estate was your sector outperformer on the day on Friday, up 1.6%. Utilities also had a strong day, but real estate, you know, still very much uh, skewed in favor of the bears from a power bar perspective. According to the Chaikin power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. The major markets are mixed. Let's hit our stock of the day now, Selenase, CE. Uh, you know, what's interesting to me is the markets are overbought here in the near term. We talk about that in our note. Uh, tech and some of the leading other leading areas uh, are overbought as well. But then we kind of rotate back to those cyclical groups that we've been talking about, materials and industrials, and we see some oversold conditions, in particular in a chemical name like Selenase, which has a bullish rating, uh, strong trend, strong industry group, outperforming the market, oversold, and we'll start to look for this overbought, oversold indicator to turn higher. Money flow is bullish. Solid support here in the 100 to $105 range. What I see is a turn, potential breakout retest that's holding thus far. Uh, I like the fact that we're bullish. I like the fact that we're outperforming. I like the fact that this is one of the areas of the market that uh, we've been highlighting as bullish. Uh, money flow is bullish. So this is an interesting setup to me, right? So while, while the, the growth and momentum stocks have become overbought with this market rebound that we started calling for about two weeks ago, uh, our other area of the market that we've liked, the kind of the cyclical areas of the market, materials and industrials, are now producing some oversold conditions, right? So you can see this rotation playing out in the market and this ebb and flow as, as the growth momentum trade gets overbought, it could potentially open up opportunities uh, down here in the cyclical areas that we like. So take a look at selling a CE as a bullish idea. Let's look at our sector tracker now. Movement of the major sectors over the last five days. A lot of green on the screen as the S&P 500 broke that four week losing streak, but for energy and You've been listening to me and you know, being gone for two days didn't change my view there. Energy actually traded at a new relative low last week. Top of the list is REITs, a little bit of a defensive bid there. Uh, financials and utilities, uh, it's kind of interesting dynamic here you know, because you know, investors who are looking for diversification and using treasuries, you're not getting much yield in the treasuries right now. So I have to wonder if they're willing to extend out a little bit and look at areas like real estate and utilities. I don't know. It's something I need to explore further. Uh, but the fact that those two groups are at the top of the list, along with financials, is interesting. Now, I think the financials is counter trend. I think it's a function of a steepening yield curve. So we want to take a look and see how that plays out. Discretionary staples, industrials, and materials are middle of the road. Uh, down towards the underperforming areas, healthcare comms, tech, and obviously energy, uh, with energy being lower over the past five days. Tech uh, took it on the chin on Friday, as did Comp Services. Healthcare is kind of interesting. It's very bifurcated. Seeing pockets of strength uh, in some areas of healthcare, but you know other areas remain under pressure. And speaking of healthcare, our industry in focus is uh, equipment and services, which over the past six months has been a slight outperformer, uh, leading the S&P 500 by five and a quarter percent. But power bar ratio is weak, 18 to 13, bears to bulls there. It's currently ranked number 13 of 21 subsectors. Names we want to avoid, orthopediatrics, kids, penumbra, PEN, and cryolife, all with very bearish ratings. Now, what I do want to say is the fund, XHE, actually has a bullish rating. Uh, bullish ETF rating, strong trend above the trend line as it consolidates this move higher, right? Nice move higher. 
dip into a consolidation here, becomes an inline performer on a relative basis. Now it is overbought here in the near term. Money flow is dip bearish as well in the near term. Um, but it's an interesting group because I think there's opportunity. Now there are 13 bullish stocks in the fund and I've given them to you here today uh, to take a look at. So um, if you're going to look for opportunities in this group, I, I, this is where you wanna focus, right? We wanna be focused on names like Hologic, Abbott, uh, intuitive, Medtronic, Zimmer, and West, right? These, you know, these are, these are your bullish names. So there's 13 names to choose from in a group that definitely has some bifurcation to it. So that potentially creates opportunities. I think it makes sense to, to drill down a little bit further, especially as it relates to investments within the healthcare sector. Let's look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers, Lyondell Basil's up 6%. Now I am a shareholder here. Um, they uh, bought a stake in a project. URI up 5.5%. Nothing company specific there, but I have to wonder if the prospects or the increasing prospects of Vice President Biden winning the election potentially points to more spending, uh, and that's a positive for URI. I'm just kind of connecting some dots there. Uh, Devin sold some assets. That stock higher 5.5%. Uh, Invesco IVZ, uh, Tryan, led by uh, famed investor Nelson Pels, took a large stake in that stock. OKE, um, nothing company specific, but I do note that Wells Fargo uh, upgraded uh, OKE today. That stock was up 5% on Friday. Taking a look at the downside, Dexcom caught a downgrade from Wells Fargo. Activision delayed World of Warcraft release. That stock lower by 5.3%. Vertex was weak with large cap biotech. Netflix and ADI both down over 4%. I did not see any company specific drivers to either of those stocks uh, to account for that trading on Friday, other than to say that the tech and comm services sectors of the market were weak. Now let's dive into the trends. It's Monday. We look at cross asset trends, pay attention to what's going on in commodities, fixed income, currencies. Now fixed income is largely just kind of flat. We've all seen uh, the yields as well as the prices of the ETFs, but take a look at crude oil here under pressure unable to break um, above resistance in the 40 to $45 zone, uh, fading from the 200 day and 50 day moving averages heading lower. I think uh, continued weakness here and in particular a break of 35 opens the door to 30 in the near term. Uh, RSI is interesting here because we noticed that it hasn't been overbought of late and now it's trending back towards uh, a bearish regime. Um, that's kind of interesting to me. I have to wonder what this weakness in crude is, is saying. You know, we've been in that stagflation camp and I think this speaks to the stag portion, the, the lack of growth uh, in the global economy. Now we are getting some PMIs out of Europe today uh, as well. So investors will be parsing those closely as it relates to the global growth picture. But our theme uh, as, as it relates to growth largely remains intact. I think where we could be wrong on the stagflation, uh, if we are wrong is on the inflation portion, i.e. if inflation fails to show up, then we're looking at a deflationary type environment. Um, at the same time, weakness in crude was not helpful to the energy complex, which I'm showing you here at the bottom, relative to SPY, XLE traded at new low relative lows last week. Gold, obviously uh, one that's on everybody's radar screen. And so we had the breakdown uh, through support at, out of this consolidation. Uh, Near-term rally testing the under underside of that broken support, now potentially resistance, all while the RSI appears to be shifting to a bearish regime. Now, what I will note is that on this near-term move to the downside here, it did not become oversold. So that's helpful uh, for the bulls, but realistically, we wanna see gold retake 1950. Otherwise, I think we're playing for a move down towards 1800 where we see some solid support. Uh, interesting to me that GDX has not broken down. Take a look at the bottom of the chart there. The gold miners have not broken down just yet. So that's an interesting development. We're going to watch how gold plays out, especially as it relates to the dollar and other commodities. Here's USD, the dollar index. Um, breaking top side from this near-term consolidation, but still a lot of wood to chop just overhead uh, with resistance beginning at the 95 level. RSI shifting to bullish ranges, and that has led to a downturn in the commodity complex as a whole, 
right? And we're seeing it mostly uh, in gold uh, and, and oil at this point. So the dollar is going to be important. A lot of eyes are on it. Uh, and how it breaks from here is going to be a key driver uh, given its inverse relationship to risk assets. So that is going to wrap us up for a Monday. It's great to be back. Take us for a test drive, chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'll come back to you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.